it's, uh, it's really a great dinosaur museum. There's big dinosaur footprints all over the place. We have the same age rocks at the base of the slope there, the red rocks sticking out at the base of the cliffs. And uh, we're thinking that maybe some of those dinosaurs said, hey, let's go to Vegas for the weekend. <laughs> so we've been looking for their tracks and bones in the sand. We haven't found them, but we did find them in the Aztec sandstone. We're working on a display, and we found another site with dinosaur footprints. And um, the one in, oh, in that area is on a cliff, and it's really dangerous. But the other one that we found is accessible on a moderate hike. So in, a, in about a year's time, I think it'll be to the public because can actually um, you know, see the dinosaur. back to the beginning. You see the rocks in the back there, those, those limestones and the dolomites? They represent when Nevada was under the sea. Nevada was under the sea for over 250 million years during the Paleozoic era of geological time. Now, if you look to the east, that ridge over there, that's the Kaibab Formation. It's upper Paleozoic, and it's the same rock as in the Grand Canyon, same formation. Kaibab sound familiar? How many have been to the Grand Canyon? Okay, so you know about the Kaibab Trail? Okay, that's the Kaibab Formation. Now right across the road here, you see this little ridge right behind, right across the road? Behind it is called Fossil Ridge. It's accessible through the Cowboy Trail Rides, which are right around the corner. It's Permian Kaibab Formation, and it's very fossiliferous. So if you took a hike up there, you would see fossils. However, here's the thing about those fossils. They are the innocent remains of a world that would soon be destroyed. The greatest mass extinction in geological history occurred at the end of the Permian period, 250 million years ago. 95% of life on the planet perished. We have an informational sign in the first pavilion over there called the end of the world. You can read about it or you Google Permian extinction. But I'll tell you what the latest theory on that is. There were volcanic eruptions in Siberia for hundreds of years, put out so much sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere that the percentage of oxygen actually in the atmosphere actually was reduced. And the sea warmed up to a threshold where methane hydrate deposits in the sea released the methane. Once you had methane and uh, carbon dioxide, these are the greenhouse gases, the earth warmed up 10 degrees centigrade, which was enough to kill 95% of life on the planet. Now, if you look due south under that big cloud, you see on the horizon there that nice um, evenly bedded limestone. Now follow the limestone, follow the bedding to the right. Follow the bedding, follow the bedding, follow the bedding. Okay, then the formation is eroded out in the wash. See that? And here it is again over here. See this low ridge in front of us? This is the next marine layer above the Permian. By the way, doesn't it look really close? It's actually a half a mile away. The first day I was here, I brought my lunch, and I wanted to sit on the bench on top, and I kept walking and walking and walking. That's the next marine layer. It's Triassic in age. The next marine layer on top of the Permian, and guess what? It is almost devoid of fossils. And why would that be? All the animals died. You said there was exactly. Extinction. It's after the great dying. There wasn't that much life in the sea to fossilize. Essentially, oh, hey, evolution hey. had to start all over again. And what evolved during in the Triassic period? What famous creatures Dinosaurs. evolved? The dinosaurs and the mammals evolved during the Triassic. The dinosaurs ruled the world for a hundred million years and they became extinct at the end of the Mesozoic. But the mammals survived and here we are. This is the last time the sea was in oh, southern him. Nevada. And southern Nevada emerged out of the sea and we had continental deposition, sandstones, shales, conglomerates. We have examples on the rock table inside. And, okay, let's see how good your eyesight is. You see, you see the square top mountain that I'm pointing to, Mount Wilson? Now look at the base of the slope 
and see if you could see like what looks like a brown line at the very base of the slope. Can you see it? It's a 20 to 30 foot high ridge of Shinarum conglomerate. We have a sample of it on the rock table inside. Right above that, we have petrified wood. We have logs, petrified wood like this, big logs. And anybody ever been to the petrified forest of Arizona? Okay. It's the same formation. It's the petrified forest member of the Chinle Formation. And so what does that tell you about the climate? If you had petrified wood, big logs, would it be humid or arid? No, humid. Humid. If you have, if you have logs, trees buried in the sediment, that indicates a humid climate. So, um, but... Uh, the after that, the climate changed, and we had a desert here during the Lower Jurassic, 190 million years ago, that was comparable to the Sahara Desert of today. We had a sand dune desert that stretched from California, Nevada, Utah, into the Rocky Mountain states. And these cliffs that you see here were sand dunes during Jurassic time. And so if you take the scenic drive and you stop over there and you take a close look at the rock, you can see layers that are going this way, layers that are going that way. It's called cross bedding as the winds shifted during Jurassic time. Later, water seeping through the, the sand uh, cemented it into a sandstone. Now the red color, we know the red color is due to iron oxide. It's harder to explain. That's why it's rough colored over there, solid red over there, and striped over there, and in places it's spotted. It's a little harder to explain. We need some real young geologists to go back to college and study geology and, um, you know, get a master's degree. Maybe we can get you some funding. But we're working on the distribution. Okay, two more things I want to tell you about. One is a world class geological feature, it's called the Keystone Thrust Fault. Okay, now, when you look at these sandstone mountains, buff and red colored, you see in the back, behind them, and, ab and above them, you see the dark gray rock? That is the Bonanza King Formation. It's 500 million years old. So you have 500 million year old rock that was pushed up on top of 190 million year old sandstone. It's called the Keystone Thrust Fault. It's a major feature of the Earth's crust. It's found here. It's found in the Valley of Fire, which is 50 miles northeast. It's found in, um, in remnants in Utah, Idaho, Montana, even in Canada. But the best exposure in the whole Cordillera is right here in Red Rock Canyon. Okay, one more thing I want to tell you about. Okay, you see this? By the way, when you look at this slope, doesn't it look like you could run right up that slope? It looks really easy. Trust me, it would take you hours if you could do it, and you probably need ropes. But anyway, if you, if, if, uh, why do you suppose this ridge, this ridge suddenly appears over there? Bam, all of a sudden there's a ridge of rock. Why would that be? Anybody know? Huh? Well, fault. Yeah, there's a fault that runs right along, there's a fault that runs right along the scenic drive, and it goes through the limestone ridge, too. It goes for kilometers. To the west. I can show it to you. You want to see the fault? You can actually see it cutting right through the limestone. Okay, so you see this low limestone ridge in front of us? Okay, now behind it, you see the buff color pyramidal sandstone mountain? You see that? Okay, to the right, there's a lower buff colored sandstone mountain. You see that? Okay, now if you stick your arm out at arm's length, you stick your thumb up. At the right side, the north side of the smaller sandstone mountain, look right above your thumb, and you can see like a white foot base and a diagonal crack. Right oh, yeah. out of the limestone. You see it? Yeah. Okay, that's the La Madre Fault. There are, there are formations along it that are less than three million years old that have been displaced by the faulting. But it's not considered an active fault now. And as soon as I say that, rumble, rumble. <laughs> but one reason we know it's not an active fault
fault is we have a lot of precarious rocks. Take a look. It's a little hard to see from here. There's a lot of rocks that look like they would be easily toppled over. So if you see a lot of rocks that look like they're easily toppled over, you think that would indicate high seismic activity or low seismic activity? Probably low, because if there was a lot of shaking, they would have toppled, although new ones are created by erosion. So that's the geology of red rock in a nutshell. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, there, there are a lot of them around here, and um, you know, in, in, Will in the Willow Springs area, there's agave roasting pits, there's, there's pictographs with, you know, where the Indians painted, and then there's um, uh, petroglyphs as well. So there's a lot of, that's right there, next to the pyramidal mound, it's called the Willow what Springs the area. What's the purpose of roasting the agave? Well, uh, the agave, they, they, I guess they would eat it, I'm not sure, but they roasted, or maybe, I'm not sure about the agave itself, but I know that they uh, roasted a lot of uh, animals. That's what they, you know, they would catch uh, big horn or even the iguanas and they would roast them in there. But I never uh, thought about the, the agave itself. Maybe they ate the plant, so I'm not sure. Maybe they made tequila. Yeah, maybe they did. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Okay, thank you.